Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide and today we're visiting Sapa or Little Hanoi. Vietnamese are the third largest foreign community in the Czech Republic after Ukrainians and Slovaks, counting over 60,000 people. The majority of the Vietnamese live in Prague and Sapa market is the heart of their community. Because Sapa is a busy market where thousands of people work every day, you cannot just film yourself standing and speaking wherever. So I'm gonna be narrating it all from here. Hi again, now you're witnessing the magic of editing. I'm in two places at the same time. I'm still not sure if Sapa is actually a touristy place. I did stumble upon a couple of tours that you can potentially do to Sapa market with tour guides and we've contacted them, but nobody ever replied. So I'm not sure if they're still functional, but nevertheless, I'm gonna link them down below. In this video, we're just gonna be sharing our experience with visiting Sapa market and hopefully Hopefully you will learn from our mistakes because oh boy we made many. But first, how do you actually get to Sapa? The market is located in Libush, around an hour away from the historical city center of Prague by public transport which ultimately keeps a lot of tourists away from there. We took a tram and then a bus number 197 and then walked for 8 minutes to the market. Most people come to Sapa by cars and there is a good reason for that. Little Hanoi is around 86 acres large and has a couple of bigger shopping malls, small grocery stores, restaurants and cafes. People come there for two reasons, eat and shop, both of which we're planning to do, but as you will see from the video, we did face some challenges on the way. When you're walking around Sapa, you have to really pay attention to your surroundings because sometimes you'll be going across big parking lots. And if you're taking photos or filming something and not paying attention, well, cars come from everywhere there. There are few pedestrian zones, but most of the time you really have to be crossing roads and looking left and right. Sapa took over the premises of the former poultry factory, so most of the buildings here are purely functional. It is not a residential area, this is only where people come to work, but they also have a Czech language school, real estate agencies, banks, barber shops, which are supposed to be really good, and nail salons. I think Sapa has a very cool atmosphere, which is very different from the rest of Prague, especially here, in the Buddhist temple. We really made sure we didn't exploit anyone's hospitality or disturbed someone's prayers, but on certain days it will be busy and you won't be able to come in just like that. Okay, let's do what everyone comes to supper for. Eating. Obviously, there are many Vietnamese restaurants all around Prague, but Sapa is still considered to be the place to try pho. There are many restaurants that just offer this specific type of a soup and you really have a lot of options. But before I talk about this, I have to share a very embarrassing experience, which actually comes from the first time I visited Sapa with my friend around seven years ago. My friend really wanted to try the pho soup, but she wanted to try it authentic way. I till this day don't know what it meant. Anyway, she didn't want to go to any regular restaurants in Sapa where most people were going. She wanted to go where locals go. So she was dragging me around the market up until we stumbled upon something which I'm not sure if it even had any name. I don't think it even had any banner that said restaurant there. So we came in and immediately everybody started looking at us. Don't get me wrong, everyone was super friendly and we ended up getting the soup and it was delicious, but the whole time I really felt like we were not supposed to come there. But my friend was that settled on staying there and we did. Please learn from my mistake and don't go where you are not supposed to go. There are many restaurants in Sapa. 
And I think you should go there where Vietnamese people will want you to go. Yeah, that obsession with doing what locals want to do really sometimes comes at the expense of locals. Anyway, my second time around in Sapa, I already knew where to go. We got some spring rolls for starters, they were delicious as always. And then this happened. It turned out that there are not actually so many menus available at a restaurant and it was during lunch time, so it was pretty packed. And the lady that was waiting on the tables brought us the menus and came back for them, so she could pass it to another table. And because I was too focused on everything around me, I kind of forgot to choose what I wanted to have for lunch and ended up going with Kung Pao. Just dumb. I should have gotten something Vietnamese, right? Because I was in Sapa. So please, when you go to a restaurant, make sure that you are at least familiar with the foods that you should be able to try. And another thing, in that particular restaurant, they didn't have a water closet. The closest one was just across the road, so there was no place where we could wash our hands. This is really not a big deal, and I'm sure it was the only restaurant where it was that way. It's just for your information. After our nice lunch, we wanted to grab a coffee. And this time, I knew where I wanted to go and what I wanted to have, because I wanted to try two types of coffee, Vietnamese filtered coffee and Vietnamese egg coffee. Yeah, turns out that egg and coffee really go well together. We went to a place called Hippo Cafe, shout out to them, they were very nice, where they actually roast their own coffee and not their customers. Filtered coffee was around 70 crowns and oh boy does it kick you in the balls. Vatsov, who had filtered coffee was actually high afterwards and we ended up getting some of it home because sometimes when you're editing at night do you really need to fly to the moon after this one cup. I went for the egg coffee, which is more of a dessert. You basically have your regular hot bitter coffee on the bottom and on the top you have beat up egg with condensed milk. And it's delicious. It was divine, it was the best coffee that I've ever had. I was completely obsessed and sugar high afterwards. Which was perfect because the next thing we were planning to do was shopping. Existential crisis here. No, I actually feel quite nice, but thank you for making it worse. <laughs> you can really find anything in Sapa, from kids' toys. Souvenirs, food, phones, clothes, and pens dropping prices. It is so incredibly creepy. Mm. This guy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. And by the way, souvenirs here are really what you find in most souvenir stores in the Prague city center. Just cheaper. The souvenir that I bought is oh. Kutna Hora. Oh. I think I know where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> But here's the deal, it's not just shopping, it's wholesale shopping. So normally on these markets here you can only buy things wholesale, which means that you cannot actually get a single piece of something, you have to get like 30 or maybe even more things, so it's not so good for uh, your regular shopping. But yeah, for example in this one you can actually buy the individual pieces, so it's good for that. If you've been to Prague, you probably noticed that a lot of smaller grocery stores are usually owned by Vietnamese people. And Sapa Market is where they go to stock up. Most stores have this word on it, which means wholesale. But you should look for this word, which means at retail prices. 
The biggest mall that sells things at retail prices is this one, and we decided to check it out. This is mainly a grocery store. They have a big selection of Asian food and snacks here. Some things I've never even seen in grocery stores in Prague, like the lotus root. But mainly it's whatever you find in corner stores and supermarkets. And yeah, they also have these wheat cookies here. Everything we saw was at least half the price here, which is why it gets really busy. People really come here to shop for the next couple of months, so prepare to wait in the line. We also went there on the weekend, which proved to be a huge mistake. And in the end, we decided that it wasn't worth to spend 30 minutes waiting in the line because of the five things in our shopping cart. Instead, we went to a nearby store and got most of the things we came for there. To sum it up, when you go to the supermarket, be prepared. The market is quite far away. If you can, come by car, because if you are planning to shop, you will have a lot of groceries to carry home. Make sure to go to the correct restaurant and know what you want to try. And of course, don't miss out on this amazing coffee. Bye!